and I uh, I hope you can hear me, first of all. Can I be heard? That is the first thing that uh, I need to bring up. Just hitting the chats here. There we go. Just looking. Bear with me for just one second. Can I be heard? Okay, you can hear me. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to hear it. Um, welcome, and I knew that I was going to be treading in dangerous ground today by uh, by picking this topic. But what are you going to do? If you hear some stuff in the background, um, if you hear some information or rather some sounds going on in the background, I've got neighbors who are uh, working on their house. Feel, I, I feel like they've been working on their house for, I don't know, 50 years or something like that. But anyway, um, they're they're getting getting close to getting done i think but you may hear some some hammering away and i am pulling some stuff up on my laptop i am still in a state of chaos uh after arriving um it's just all of my stuff packed away etc we have over 200 people uh watching already thank you so much for tuning in i really do appreciate it and one thing i'm gonna say uh right off the bat this is not about and it's probably gonna end up there just because it's so tough to avoid it but this isn't about pro biden or anti-biden it just isn't it's about what was announced and what it might mean to the future of artemis you know, it's it came as a surprise to me. Um, I expected and I am not going to give away who I voted for in the last election. That's the last thing I'm going to do. But what I was expecting from Biden was that he was going to divert money from Artemis and put it into more climate studies. That's really what I thought was going to end up happening. And yet, at the same time, uh, that isn't what we've been seeing at all, even though there is stuff in this proposal that is, you know, allocated towards that. Um, and uh, but nevertheless, um, there's there's money going towards Artemis, more money than there was last year. And in addition to that, um, Biden has also started an investigation into SLS to try to reduce the cost of that rocket um, at about time. I don't know if anything's going to come out of it because politics seldom, you know, yields any kind of real results, positive results. But at the same time, um, you know, these these are things that have developed that I didn't expect. Um, I Everybody was talking about, everybody was talking about, um, you know, that uh, we were going to push up the date, that, you know, Artemis wasn't going to be much of a priority for Biden, that it was, you know, he didn't talk about it virtually at all during the whole campaign. And so the whole idea was going to be that, you know, this was a Trump and Pence idea and that he was just going to kick it to the curb. Thank you so much, uh, free positive energy. Thank you so much uh, for starting this off. By the way, once again, as usual, everything that I've got going on right now, um, and I've got, uh, by the way, there's links in this uh, video description, other ways to support the channel. This is going to me trying to get to go see SN 15, which may or may not happen faster than anything else. Um, and like I say, I'm I'm really trying to avoid this, guys. I've got hopefully moderators uh, on right now who are going to be keeping an eye on the uh, one candidate or another candidate sucks kind of comments um, because that's not what this is about. It just isn't. It's about what was announced and I'm going to take what was announced at its face value. You know, what was said and what is proposed budget wise and what might that mean? Now, if we want to say that it's a lie, okay, then we just leave the conversation at that. Everything that everything that Biden says is a lie and, you know, we can't really trust anything he says and so therefore there's no conversation to have. But let's just assume that he isn't lying about this. 
let's just assume that look, let's take it at face value. Not trying to support the guy again, just trying to say, let's assume that he's telling the truth. Then what does this actually mean? What does all of this, uh, what would this mean? What was announced is a $24.7 billion budget for NASA in 2022, which is an increase of 6.3% from last year's uh, amount of $23.271 billion, which wasn't as much as everybody you know wanted back then, but still, this is really what he wants to see happen. And, um, and so, at least this is, you know, what was announced. This is what he says wants to happen. And so therefore, you know, I'm going to run with this episode as if that is the truth. Here's the increases, the things that are being, thank you so much, Bill, really do appreciate it. And, uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited about SN15. I am really, really hoping that that's that, uh, that I get to see that once again, if they launch it in the next few days, I might have a hard time getting down there that fast, but I don't think it's going to happen in the next few days. I think they've got some stuff to test on all these hundreds of different uh, changes and improvements that have been made to the rocket before uh, they're going to launch it. I doubt they're going to launch it this week. Um, but then who knows? <laughs> I've been wrong about things before. But uh, SN11 was on the pad for about three weeks before they launched it. I have a feeling that SN15 is going to be on the pad for roughly the same time. Back to the original point. Um, um, so what we're looking at, obviously, Earth science, which is a lot about climate, that got an increase of about three hundred million dollars. Um, so and that's to be expected. You know, Biden said from the beginning that that's what he was going to do. But I mean, at least money isn't going away from Artemis and going into that. Instead, he's asking for new money from Congress to pay for that. The space technology program, this is very interesting, is receiving a 27% increase, 27% increase for space technology. This includes um, things, and it says provide new technologies to help the commercial space industry grow is what the uh, budget document says. Novel early stage space technology research that would support the development of clean energy. Now, of course, you know, everybody's going, oh, clean energy, you know, what are we talking about there? Are we talking about global warming? No, actually what I think is being talked about there is miniaturized nuclear reactors for, um, for nuclear thermal propulsion because miniaturized nuclear reactors, as I mentioned in my most recent video, about the subject can be used to power small communities and it can also be used for nuclear thermal propulsion. And I think that's what this is all about is miniaturized um, miniaturized nuclear uh, reactors. That's where that money's coming from. Um, once again, Hard to say for sure, but that's a 27% increase. That's a very, very big deal. Um, and then we have uh, the Human Exploration Program, which, by the way, that's bigger than anything. Um, the Earth Science is getting about uh, $2.3 billion. Human Exploration is getting $6.9 billion. So we're talking triple the money um, for Earth Science is going into human exploration. Um, and an increase, obviously, therefore, to Artemis. On top of that, wow, 455 people watching. Once again, please like, please subscribe, guys. Smash that like. Thank you very much. And any, anybody who's, uh, any support I get today is going towards SN15, towards me getting to go see SN15. Film it in person, hopefully, you know, get some close-up views of you guys. Live stream from the pad, as I have done in the past, because I I can get clear cell signal out there amazingly. Um, so unless that's changed, I think I clip off of Mexican cell phone towers actually out there. <laughs> um, so all of any support I get today is going towards that. So thank you very much um, for, for what I've been getting so far and for anything that comes up in the future. Okay, back to the topic. Um, enough of that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, there's more money going uh, into Artemis at the same time. Thank you so much. Uh, 
I'm sorry to got up and another big super chat came through. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I think there might have been a question asked there. I just want to catch it real quick. Um, the HLS down select one way or the other. There's nothing specific that was laid out um, in the Biden uh proposal in terms of human landing systems. However, if Biden does what all, there's a number, and I did a video about this too, there's a number of Democratic senators um, from across the country who sent a request to Biden to increase human landing system funding for as much as it needs to be supported to be completed. So that's what they asked for, and I have a feeling that that's what he's going to sign off on. He's done two things. Number one, he's increased the budget, but number two, he started an investigation into SLS to reduce the cost of that program. So if SLS is going to cost less, let's hope that that's what actually happens. They cut funding to SLS, then that money can go into human landing services. So that is something that uh, that's something that can really make a difference. Um, so let's hope that that's actually what happens. That's just my interpretation based on the budget and based on a thank you again, free positive. Uh, wow. Yeah. Miniature nuclear reactors. Yep, definitely. Um, so that's my interpretation of what's going on. Okay. So here's some uh, stuff coming from my, uh, my discord supporters. We need to land on the a man on the moon and safely return by 2024. Sound familiar? I certainly hope so. Wow. Another uh, super chat. Thank Thank you so much, uh, Maximus. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm really hoping. What I am hoping is happening here is that Biden is trying to take the legacy of Artemis and make it his own, regardless of how you feel about that. I think that he wants to shake the hand of the first woman to set foot on the moon. That would be a huge, huge political thing for him. And I think that's part of what he's up to. Um, Ian, thank Thank you so much for supporting me. You've been watching me since I had 2,000 subscribers. Wow. Thank you so much for sticking with me for all of that time. Um, that's a huge thing. Okay. So we have um, another thing. Do we think NASA will be included in the upcoming infrastructure bill? God, I hope so, Johnny. Uh, that would be fantastic. I would love that um, if that got thrown in there because after all, you know, NASA technology can help us with our infrastructure, can help modernize our our electrical system, all of those sorts of things. So I think that uh, that is the case. Uh, Luis says, I think Biden is the moon man. Well, I think that's what he's trying to become. For better or worse, I think that he's trying to grab this like, wow, Philip, thank you so much. That was a serious super chat. Thank you. Uh, they're just coming in like crazy. Stephen, thank you. But I think that that's what, for better or worse, I think that's what he's trying to do is grab this legacy. But you know what? That can work for everybody. Trump supporters can say, hey, Trump started this and this is his legacy. And then Democrats can say, no, this is Biden's legacy. And then they can argue with him about it. And who gives a damn? I don't give a damn. What I give a damn about is getting to the moon. Let's get to the moon. And you know what? But that's what this increase in, in budget seems to represent to me is, you know, the desire to get to the moon. And the fact that Biden has not changed his announcement on 2024, the fact that he hasn't said, oh, it's going to be 2025, 2026, the fact that no announcement has been made about this indicates to me that he is still shooting for this. Steve, he's still shooting for this. Oh, thank you, Pete. Um, actually, I have misplaced my sunglasses for one thing. Number two. Two, I have a hard time seeing the comments with them, um, which is why I'm using my normal glasses right now. What I need to do is get uh, sunglasses with bifocals in them. <laughs> Old guy stuff, you know. Okay, Phil Rogan. Um, oh, okay, never mind. Uh, Firth, Darth Thrust. Uh, after a lifetime in government, my read of this budget, budget is good news for NASA overall, but mixed messages on Artemis in specific. That is true. Most of the overall $3 billion increase was in the land and gateway still short of the estimates to make it a realistic program. This is just the president's request, which is very different than what Congress will authorize. You're right about that, Darth. The one piece of good news is, is the fact that Biden is from the Senate and the Democrats control both the Senate and the House. So he does have the connections to get what he wants. And especially since Republicans, 
you know, support this initiative as well. I think that he's going to get a lot of what he wants out of this if landing on the moon is going to become a reality. Could Biden choose the lunar starship? I saw that um, come popping up. Well, he could, I think. I mean, the president can do a lot. But NASA is going to make their decision by the end of April. And in my opinion, given what the fact that that uh, that the lunar starship needs to be refueled multiple times in orbit just to get to the moon and back. Um, and, you know, we haven't been able there's been no successful landing of the starship yet. The demonstration that starship will be able to refuel in low Earth orbit has not been demonstrated fast enough in order for NASA to make a decision on Lunar Starship, whereas the national ripoff team, as I like to call them, and Dynetics, which I'm much more in favor of, have presented a lot of stuff to NASA that isn't commonly reported on. That includes life support systems, that includes um, landing navigation systems, um, and also simulation programs for astronauts to mess around with. Actual um, Artemis astronauts have experimented with the landing systems on both the Dynetics and the National Ripoff Team system. And so as a result, I think that their influence is going to push to where both of those um, competitors are going to be the choices at the end of April, and then they're going to be duking it out. It's not what I want. I would prefer Dynetics plus Lunar Starship, but unfortunately, um, I don't think that we don't. Yeah, the national ripoff team, the national team um, is what they're actually called, Blue Origin, um, but uh, comprised of organizations that have made it their business to rip off the American taxpayer for a long time plus a company that uh, has yet to send anything into orbit. Um, so there, that's who the uh, national ripoff team is, just uh, just to, <laughs> just to, spe special, uh, to make that clear. Okay, in these modern times, NASA's share of space is shrinking year by year. Um, there used to be only two players now that there are many. You're right, Phil. And I uh, there's there's a lot going on right now when it comes to that. Oh, thank you, Bottos. I really do appreciate that. Um, so yeah, uh, please buy some decent some equipment. Yes, Sigmund, I have. I have gotten some decent equipment thanks to supporters. Um, I have a really good zoom scope, not what I was using before. I've got a really good zoom on a steady tripod that's going to give much better images this time, and I've already messed around with it. Um, okay, we've got C Stallion saying, longer term, I'm concerned about the breakdown of the Bretton Woods system, global free trade, how that's going to affect the space program, uh, predicted by notable geopolitical strategists such as Zell and Freeman. Interesting. I'm going to have to read research that. Um, I don't know uh, enough about it to make a comment, um, but thank you for bringing that up. Um, and Billy, thank you so much. And uh, good day, mate. Really do appreciate you tuning in, especially since it's it's the dead of night there. Um, wow, thank you so much indeed. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, Senator Shelby is retiring. Yes, <laughs> Senator Shelby is on his way out. Um, what that's going to mean for the future of what happens in Huntsville is a very interesting question, but still, it, it is he who has really created the whole SLS fiasco. Um, we could be going to the moon much, much more affordably based on what ULA wanted to do, for God's sake. We're not talking about SpaceX. We're talking about a, you know, a company that's really ingrained, thank you, Michael, by the way, um, really ingrained in the whole system. You know, the, this is part of the Old Boys Network, and they were we're trying to go to the moon more affordably by refueling in orbit, and uh, Senator Shelby put the brakes on that uh, with his influence. Um, can I confirm? Uh, thank you for the uh, for the final pattern. Can I confirm if Elon is a lizard? No, I can neither confirm nor deny that. Um, let's see. Starship should send the fuel tankers up ahead of the crew or cargo vessel. You're right. That is true, um, Roger. That should be done. Um, but once again, to make Make the whole tanker thing effective and to make it affordable you know you need to show that it's reusable um, reusability as as Elon has said again and again and again is the key to the success of Starship therefore we've got to be able to land this damn thing um, yeah it's uh, near the continent 
Think I got something on my okay. <laughs> okay. Trying to take it off, whatever the heck that is. All right. Um, and thank you very much for the uh for, for the super chat. Um, okay. Uh, Dynetics, who will uh, launch it? ULA or SLS? Says Ryan. Uh, ULA, according to um, according to Dynetics and my interview with them, ULA is going to be launching the Dynetics Alpaca, assuming that Dynetics wins out in this competition. Um, it and it could be. I'm a mess, guys, and I'm not going to deny that. So anyway, eh, something there. Brush it off. Okay. Um, does the Dynetics lander still only land two people, or have they increased that Starliner or uh, Starliner glitch? According to my uh, under my understanding, um, the, uh, the they are capable of landing up to four people on the uh, on the alpaca. Now, you know there may be some conditions in terms of how long they can be maintained that way. I think the idea is to put down two people plus a habitation. Um, facility there, a small like a habitation area, and then um, get that back. Is the EM drive a real thing? Sorry, I'd sorry to jump in there, but somebody asked that. I don't think it is. I don't believe that it is. Um, I've read a lot about it, and I just it it just doesn't seem possible. Um, and there haven't been any uh, scientific experiments aside from the ones that were initially conducted that were not peer reviewed. So anyway, that was off topic a little bit. Um, so uh, so yeah, a Starliner glitch at four people is what Alpaca is technically capable of. Um, but I think the idea is they need to put down a uh, a habitation um, uh, unit or or module first on the moon and then bring down four people um okay let's see here uh sadly my crystal ball is telling me that the national team is probably the heavy favorite to win the hls contract because it's an apollo proven mission architecture the contract award rules will favor that because it's lower mission risk on paper it will also means that i have the same high cost and sustainability problems that got apollo truncated for the first time oh my god darth i hope you're wrong um and i know you you hope you're wrong too angel thank you so much for the super chat um yeah dear god i hope you're wrong about that um and you know there are a number of considerations that need to be brought up about this the the uh, national team is going to have a very expensive solution two-thirds of that lander is not reusable and reusability is starting to become the watchword of of you know future space development nasa is beginning to embrace this that's why why they gave money to the starship you know so i am very interested um to see what happens in that regard but god i hope you're wrong about that and I'm really thinking that that ladder, because that ladder is so much more dangerous than the uh, ladder on Apollo was, I'm hoping that that's one of the things that does it in. Vitaly, thank you so much for the rubles. Thank you so much for that uh, super chat. Oops, why did my coffee? Oh, there it is. Okay. Mm, Tartan, Texas says, uh, saw this morning that the Starliner test is now waiting because of activity in front of it uh, at the ISS. Not quite sure why they need that thing now. Um, is NASA about to reuse a booster? You know what? I could care less when the Starliner goes up. Um, you know, it's just not a, not a thing. Um, okay, let's see here. A patent for a plasma. Oh, yeah, a plasma drive. Um, and fusion. There's a couple of questions that's been asked about that. There's money in this this bill to support those kinds of things, to support um, breakthrough technologies. Now, of course, um, and by the way, yeah, a, a comment was just made, please like, please subscribe. We've got over 600 people watching. Let's get to 300 likes at the moment, at least. Um, I'd be thrilled if we could. Um, and thank you very much for uh, for tuning in and thank you very much for your support. Okay, so uh, let's, uh, I'm not convinced that the ladder is a risk going down. You know, the one thing about about it. It's 10 meters. I have seen this ladder in person um, on the mock-up when I went to uh, to Houston. I the This lander, the national team lander, is taller than anything else in the NASA mock-up room, including 
space shuttle mock-ups and all kinds of things. The thing is incredibly tall and incredibly tall means incredibly dangerous. I can't imagine that NASA isn't going to see this. I mean, ladder safety companies talk about the things that, you know, you need to do in order to keep, a, you know, to, to maintain safety on a ladder. How much more difficult is it going to be in a giant environmental suit? I just don't know. I don't know. I, I certainly hope. Uh, did I see Elon's tweet that they're going to the moon very soon? Um, we'll we'll see about that. I'm I'm not sure what Elon's been getting uh, in terms of messages on that. But who knows? Who knows what's going to be happening? I know that Elon wants that he's been talking about going to the moon one way or the other. Um, would, okay, uh, back to let's see. What do I make of Raptor engines on Starship? Seem to be the key failure factor at the moment. We did talk about this in the in a past episode, um, and we've got mixed reviews on that right now. Maybe Raptors work better if we're not trying this crazy flip turn thing at the you know for the landing. Which, by the way, you don't don't need to do when you're landing on the moon. Um, we shall see. Um, but, you know, and to get back to the whole Elon, we're going to the moon soon kind of thing. I don't know if he has a whole lot of insight as to, you know, what um, what NASA's decision making processes are going to be at the end of April. What I do know is that NASA is making a decision on HLS in just a couple of weeks. And, um, and we'll see. Uh, you know, game on as far as that's concerned. Um, Congress has no business making decisions about human advancement. The flawed tax funding system is the problem. You know what, Roger? I actually had a political science teacher who said that people, that a taxpayer should be allowed to put what they want the money to go to, their personal tax money to go to on their tax return form, that they should be able to make their own personal decisions. And then lobbyists should be lobbying us the taxpayer as opposed to the representatives in Congress, which I always thought was a really neat idea, but that's off topic completely and obviously is not going to happen anytime soon. But it, I agree, it is flawed. Um, oh, a, a uh, budget document, strategic plans, performance reports uh, was just uh, posted here by Johnny Spacer um, on Discord. Thank you so much. If Starship may be having issues with Raptor, would Blue Origin have issues as well? Both are methane powered. Um, Blue Origin is more secretive about the R&D. We shall see. Um, the launch of the Vulcan Centaur is going to be the key moment for Blue Origin. And because that's the only thing they have that's really worth anything um, are those engines on the Vulcan Centaur. If that launch, which by the way, has an incredibly valuable payload on it, incredibly valuable, and it's a maiden launch, I mean, wow, it's like a test launch with one of the most important Artemis cargoes on board. There's a lot of faith in that. If it goes right, then it shows that those are good engines and they are mature. If it doesn't go right, then yeah. Um, ULA has gone over these engines with a fine tooth comb. There is a lot riding on this. That rocket blows up on the pad or has some other kind of problem, and the future of ULA is in huge danger. So I can't imagine that they've made, you know, that they've overlooked that or haven't tested these engines seven ways to Sunday. But at the same time, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Um, I do, by the way, plan to be at Cape Canaveral for the launch of the Vulcan Centaur, just because there's so much riding on that, um, uh, literally so much riding on that. Um, is the national team dependent on New Glenn? Can they launch on a Vulcan once New Glenn is inevitably delayed? Yes, they can. Um, they can definitely launch on one of those. Um, it's a very big, it is a very big lander, um, so it needs something that has a very big fairing size. Um, so there is space money all over the budget. NOAA has a big, big boost for space as an example. Yes, that's true. Uh, NOAA got a boost as well in the budget. And we'll get back to that here in just a second. Um, okay. <laughs> Timothy, uh, thank you so much for everything you're doing, Timothy. Uh, yeah, I figured that this might happen, so, and I'm not going to go into it any further than that, but thank you, Timothy. I owe you a lot. Um, so, uh, 
uh phil rogan uh, we could call them rupture engines <laughs> instead of raptor until something like uh, still one lands uh starliner glitch thank you for everything you are doing uh this is uh yeah my my moderators are the best um no question about it um awesome awesome people uh wow we still have lots of people watching please like please subscribe and let's keep keep it going here could the dianetics lander put cargo or habitation modules for a lunar camp easier than starship and blue origin yes yes it could and let me explain why it's a smaller lander and keep in, in right now all artemis is trying to do is scout out the surface of the moon to determine where we want to put a lunar base it's a scout ship and what do you want from a scout ship you want a small scout ship it's critical and so dynetics is actually putting a great deal of effort into reducing the amount of of debris plume that will be created by their engines doing a lot of studies in order to make their lander as practical as possible this is another reason why i support it i just think that it's because it's small it's a very good scout ship which is what you know artemis needs right now in the future when we need lots of cargo going down to build a base that's when the lunar starship is definitely needed um so i really hope that nasa has the innovation that is willing to take the risk um to do something about that um i am i am definitely making a case um yeah the, the uh, spacex is in the running for the moon currently a question was just asked about that um yes they are at the moment, the Lunar Starship is still in the mix um, for the HLS, uh, and that's going to either continue or not in the next few weeks. April 30th is the key date where NASA will make an announcement as to who is going forward on the HLS. Will it be National Team? Will it be Dianetics? Will it be Lunar Starship? Or will it be two of the three or something like that? I think it's going to be two of the three. This is my personal prediction, and I hate it, but it's my personal prediction, it will be National Team and Dynetics. They will go forward just as um, the Crew Dragon and Starliner went forward with the human, uh, the uh, ISS service uh, co contract. So that's what I'm predicting. And we'll see if I'm right. Um, did I catch Martin Rowley? No, I did not, Deacon. Um, and I need to at this point. Um, Ryan, on the top of Dynetics, did they ever mention what uh, happens to the extra fuel tanks once they're ejected? Yes, indeed, Ryan. Um, I did a uh, an interview um, on the topic, and um, and Kathy told me that they want the tanks to be reused for other purposes once they um, are on the moon. They would like to put liquid oxygen into them. Um, so we will we will see what happens as far as that's concerned um thank you c stallion for the uh for the super chat just looking here of interest in geopolitical predictions oh okay the accidental superpower the absent uh superpower disunited engines uh thank you thank you for that i i do appreciate it so um Okay, we'll keep this going. Um, so, uh, yeah, the extra fuel tanks, they do want to uh, make use of those. And the idea is, is once we get uh, in situ fuel production going on the moon, um, then they're going to load up those fuel tanks with liquid oxygen um, in order to be used for additional fuel, either for their own landers or maybe for somebody else. Um, we'll see as far as that's concerned. Um, lack of production on the Lunar Starship mock up at Boca is interesting. I've never seen SpaceX slow roll on anything like that. I'm not real optimistic that it has a role to play anytime soon, says Darth Rust. You know what? You read my mind, Darth. You really did. Um, I've seen that nose cone just sitting there. Thank you, Mars Embassy. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate that. Mars Embassy, who provides a lot of stuff for this channel, a lot of unique footage that I use in my videos. He's in Boca. Subscribe to his channel, please. Um, okay, so uh, we'll that, and that's all I'm going to say in that regard. Um, so yeah, I, that nose cone has been sitting there forever, and I see it get moved around all the time. Whenever they have something new coming out and they need to to make room for it, they just take that lunar starship nose cone and put it someplace else, out of the way. 
it, it just seems to me that that is not really where their emphasis lies and they don't have any time left. Um, you know, we're only talking a couple of weeks before the end of April, and I'm pretty certain that NASA is very close to making their decision right now as to who's going to be going forward with HLS. Uh, can we send the ISS uh, to the moon or Mars? Uh, no, it, it's not well configured for that. Um, you might be able to put some engines on it but uh but we'll see uh spacex catching the super heavy yeah that's an interesting one i once again i'm not you know a rocket scientist maybe you can do that i don't know i just don't understand why you don't want landing pads um i i just don't get that landing pads to me provides more stability but somebody can probably educate me more about that um do i plan on writing a, a book in the future says phil so much material well actually what i do intend to do um and you you're hearing it here first I'm going to start a website of some kind, maybe a Facebook page or something like that, and start writing articles. Um, that is one thing that I intend to do. Uh, so, yeah, that'll be my next step. Not writing a book, but writing articles about a lot of this, uh, a lot of this material that I've been putting out on YouTube. So that's an answer for that. Um, okay, but, but, but what do we got uh, as far as that's concerned? Well, NASA cut one or two of the nominations for the HLS. I think they're only going to cut one for the HLS. And this the reason I believe that is because that's what they did um, with the commercial space program to the ISS. They narrowed it down to the Starliner and to the Crew Dragon. I think they're going to narrow it down to the Alpaca and whatever the heck the national ripoff team calls that monstrosity. And yeah, I, I just slam on it all the time. But you know, this isn't a personal thing. It's not like I just personally hate Blue Origin. It really isn't. Um, another super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, really quick, uh, just to catch that before it goes zooming by. Why use Starship to go to the moon? Those flaps and sea level optimized engines are dead weight. Yeah, I agree. Uh, lunar Starship uh, is is better. But um, thank you very much for the uh, for the super chat. And there are other solutions as well. Space News Pod. Thank you to the moon. Thank you so much. And by the way, Space News Pod. Uh, great folks, great folks indeed. Um, really do appreciate that. Um, also, unhinged space. Now that I've uh, just mentioned that, unhinged space. We've got 695 people watching. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you need to subscribe to this channel. All right. It doesn't cost you anything to do it, for God's sake. And uh, they, they they put out some really good content. They've got some really good, unique animations on this channel so and by the way they're not i'm not getting paid or anything like that i just i you know they're they're a new and up and coming channel i'm trying to help some of these folks please subscribe to unhinged space okay so i've said what i've said in that regard um 700 people watching please like please subscribe let's get to 500 likes um so uh, so thanks very much uh, for tuning in. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Nicholas Viney had a very good question on topic, asked about the blunt nose cone. Okay, thank you, Deacon, for, for bringing that um, to my attention. Uh, Mars Embassy actually has a theory about this, and I think it's a very good one. They want to use it as an ejectable nose cone that comes down with parachutes. As you can see, there's like little handles, little, um, you know, it, it seems to be just like points that you would attach attach parachute lines to or, or parafoils to. And if you eject the nose cone while you're trying to bring down Starship or bring, then all you have is essentially a big booster coming down, a large version, shall we say, of the Falcon 9 booster. Maybe it'll make it easier to land the thing if it's not so top heavy. Or maybe it's an abort system. Somebody just pointed that out. That's a neat idea as well, especially since maybe you can put parachutes on it. So yeah, there's a, it's it's a small nose cone, but I really think uh, that 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 putting parachutes on the thing is what they have in mind um, for whatever reason. Um, but I think it's a it's a neat idea. It's 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 uh, it's intriguing. But um, I can't wait to see what they do with it. Let's let's put it that way. Okay. <clears throat> uh, by the way, thank you, Axiom Space. <laughs> 
for providing me with what I need to uh, <laughs> to keep going here. Um, thank you for the super chat. Five euros from Aachen, Germany. Uh, guten Nachmittag, or is it Guten Abend for you out there? Uh, really do appreciate it. Danke sehr. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's fantastic. Thank you for the super chat. Okay, um, let's see. So we got lots of people typing here and lots of people uh, typing here as well. So once again, um, you know, we've been talking a lot about the budget. We have a lot of people who have signed on. So once again, you know, just reviewing it, it's a substantial increase in money for the uh, for the NASA budget that's been coming up that Biden um, is asking for. Um, and there are improvements across the line. There's improvements for Earth science, which is to be expected, you know, of climate studies, that sort of thing. Um, thank you, Mr. Duncan. I uh, appreciate that. There's also uh, money uh, for the uh, for Artemis, uh, an increase in budget for them as well. Um, there is a substantial increase in space technology. Um, as I mentioned before, a 27% increase in that. To me, that is something that is a big deal. Um, that is that means money going into nuclear thermal propulsion and micro nuclear reactors, small scale nuclear reactors for small remote communities. Um, a lot of uh, Rodney, yes, uh, you know something. Like I say, I'm and and I I hate the fact that the that whole topic is is so political. But it is, and I'm trying to avoid politics. So in any event, uh, that's, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to comment on, on what you're saying there. I'm just going to move on. So uh, in any event, um, but I will say this when it comes to global warming is the fact that going to the moon, regardless of whether it's real or not, is something that can def definitely benefit it because, Solar panels, space-based solar, can be manufactured and transported to low Earth orbit far easier from the moon, far easier from the moon than it can be from Earth. So, in other words, you know, manufacturing the stuff on the moon and then sending it to low Earth orbit and then transmitting the energy to Earth is something that uh, is, is a huge, enormous source of power. But on top of that, this increase in technology, the increase in the technology budget, which is going towards nuclear power, affordable, safe nuclear power, that's something else that impacts that particular topic regardless of what you think about it you know it's but that's where you know the money is going and it will not only help that it will also help out nuclear thermal propulsion and other types of next generation propulsion um, so that is a big deal a very big deal um, so that's uh, I'm very interested about that uh, also uh, education programs um, were included not a lot of 20 million dollar increase um, towards education. But keep in mind that stuff like Space Camp, um, things that, you know, so many of our great astronauts today um, are important, uh, you know, are, you know, went to Space Camp um, and got their started, start, start there. So, you know, um, education, definitely a good thing. Um, and it's a pretty minor uh, increase. Okay, let's see here. Elon tweeted, planning to catch Starship horizontally, super Dracos would be useful for this. Very interesting. Um, once again, I'd, I'd be interested to see how they do that. Um, Bruden62, good to see you. Do you think the change in the nose cone is related to the announcement on more funding from Biden? An announcement usually lags behind the actual build out. It's kept confidential from the public, but need, needed to speed up development. Don't know. I don't know about that one. Um, it could be that an investigation into SLS has indicated that in the future, Starship should replace SLS. Maybe that information's been passed on and that is the ultimate goal. Um, but once again, I'm I'm shooting in the dark on that one. Um, while we're picking on sneak this one in, there's a, a little uh, blue onion uh, uh, <laughs> meme that's just been tossed in. Thank you so much for that one. Um, once again, it's not about picking on them. It's it's about the fact that I have no tolerance for a company that's been around for 20 years and still hasn't gotten anything into orbit yet. Um, that really annoys the hell out of me. Okay, Ryan says, uh, uh, and by the way, that's the space update guys i'm gonna make another shout out 
the space update guys check them out as well top notch great folks um so a lot of good channels out there who aren't um being properly recognized who don't have enough subscribers um so uh nasa claims that the orion capsule and sls could be used for mars missions but by the time they get the get uh, sound around to that starship may be ready to go to mars um yeah uh, I I think that SLS should not be used uh, for Mars missions. I'll tell you that. Um, I think that it would be a wasteful thing in the extreme to use SLS to go to Mars. Um, it's just not the right solution. It just really isn't. You need more stuff going to Mars, and the only way you do that is by refueling in orbit. That is the solution that we need. Um, so geostationary orbit is best for that, uh, for the for the, uh, the um, solar panels, 24 by 7 sunlight. You're right, Johnny, and once again, that's easier to get to from the moon than it is from Earth um, because of Earth's ridiculous gravity. Um, I call it ridiculous gravity because it's so inconvenient to our efforts to explore the solar system. If it was only a little bit more, we couldn't explore anything at all, um, or it would be incredibly difficult to do it. Um, so we are fortunate that it's at the level that it is, and it would be more convenient for us, actually, if we had two-thirds of the gravity that we do. But we're stuck with what we're stuck with. Um, global warming, maybe fusion power works better in space, not forgetting the big fireball in the middle of the solar system, much more energy when you get closer to it, says Phil Rogan. Yep. Good point. Uh, SLS, scout ship, starship, colonization ship. Yes, indeed. James Dowling, thank you so much. Wow. Thank you, James. That's, that's so generous. Um, uh, <laughs> a big supporter in Canada. Thank you very much for that. Um, so yes, the starship is indeed a colonization ship. SLS seems to be on the brink of doing what it was supposed to do, but at the same time, it's only going to do it for a little while. I think that it's only going to take care of, you know, a few initial launches to the moon and it will be replaced. It's already being replaced. I mean, originally SLS was supposed to deploy the gateway so much for that falcon heavy is taking care of that and we'll take care of just about everything from the gateway really everything involved with artemis that was supposed to involve the sls has been replaced except for human transportation that's all it's being used for now which is a good idea you know the sls is just too wasteful and too expensive to be used for any other purpose and so you know hopefully it this moves on to human transportation as well we shall see um what happens in that regard okay um so let's uh let's keep let's keep this going let's keep this going um Believe the space race will be the one thing that will unite a country, a planet, and our species. Oh, thank you so much. Um, Bruton62 says, my channel helps with that. I certainly hope it does. Um, I've been invited, actually, to be a uh, guest speaker. I'm not going to say where, um, but on a channel that's much bigger than mine. Um, I'm pretty excited about that, and uh, you'll, you'll be seeing it soon enough. But uh, all the details haven't been hashed out, but I'm really honored about that, and it really does blow me away as to how many people in the space community know who I am at this point, it, I, I really don't understand. So I, I'm deeply humbled. That's all I can say. Um, I, I really didn't expect this. So we'll keep it going. Let's keep it going. Okay. Um, as far as, uh, and so we've been discussing a lot of the details. The National Science Foundation, by the way, um, is also getting money out of this proposed budget. $10.2 uh, billion, um, and that's separate from NASA, um, a 20% increase. That includes funding to continue work on the Vera C. Rubin Observatory in Chile, although the document does not mention how much funding will be provided for that. But still, that's something that was in in uh, it was in danger of being canceled. Um, so in any event, we'll we'll see what ends up uh, happening there. Um, okay. 
so yeah, uh, interesting quote from a poster from NASA Spaceflight regarding uh, SLS Future. I'm a card-carrying member of the Kill SLS ASAP camp, but the organizational implications of doing so are simply catastrophic inside NASA. It requires a lot of musical chairs at JSC, and it completely get yeah, that's true. Very true, all of this. I'm pretty sure that everyone has seen the handwriting on the wall and is making plans for some sort of grand bargain that can keep most of the players where they are, doing things that sort of kind of match their skill sets, but working on non-SLS, non-Orion things. Um, that cake isn't quite baked. Uh, thank you, Kader. I really appreciate what you just said there. And yeah, it's killing SLS would not be a good thing at this point. Transitioning to uh, Starship is what should be done over time. Um, by the way, uh, Bako, thank you so much for the super chat. And I'm doing really well right now. Let me tell you, doing this and talking to you guys um, is some of the most exciting stuff that I can do. I really enjoy it a lot. Spending time with my kids, I would say, is is the only other thing that uh, I like more than this. But other than that, uh, this is this is really fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Let's uh, keep it going. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, apparently people have been asking me to do a Dear Moon. I actually did a Dear Moon video um, a few months ago. Um, maybe it's time for me to do another one. I talked about how Dear Moon could be accomplished by 2023 on schedule in that video. But maybe I need to talk about it again um, if a lot of folks aren't aware of it. Um, it has been a little while, so uh, so we'll see. Okay. Um, Johnny Spacer says, regarding SLS, didn't Bridenstine put a down payment on nearly four or five more SLS rockets? Yes, he did, Johnny. Um, SLS is very thoroughly funded at this point. Um, very thoroughly funded. So, you know, and that is another reason why I've got, you know, some feeling optimistic about human, uh, about HLS is this new funding. I don't think SLS needs any more money to do what it needs needs to do. Um, 4.7% increase not counting inflation is not going to cut it. You're right about that, Will. I agree with you. Thank you for the super chat. I wish I had seen more money, obviously, but I'm glad we got something. I'm glad we're getting something out of this because there's a lot of, of years that we don't get a damn thing, especially considering the fact that we had all this COVID stuff right now and all the money the government spent recently on COVID relief, et cetera. That would be a great excuse to cut funding to NASA. That's what I would expect. And that's not what happened. And that's why I find this so exciting. That's why I'm so encouraged about all this, because I really didn't expect that to happen um, at all. Um, so, yeah. And, and once again, the Dear Moon thing. Yeah, I may do another one uh, if folks aren't as, as familiar. It may, maybe it was a little while ago. So, yeah, maybe I'll take another shot at it, especially since it's uh, so, so big in the news right now. No more engines after those, uh, says Roger. Well, they did um, ask for a whole bunch of engines um, for the uh, for new stuff so we'll see as far as that's concerned I'm not certain as to uh, as to what's gonna happen with the uh, you know with future um, engines on the uh, the rs 25s I do know that a lot of additional engines were ordered on top of the 16 that they already have available um, from the shuttle program. So I think a fair number of SLS launches are funded at this point, which is why we don't uh, need to see it. <laughs> Would love to see me on the Dear Moon launch. Well, thank you. And, and watch me get angry on the way up. Um, that would be an exciting thing. But at the same time, there are so many people who are more artistically talented than I and what they could bring back in terms, you know, the whole idea behind Dear Moon, even though it's changed a bit, is is let's, you know, let's bring some artistic expression to the experience of going to space. Um, I'm not an artist. I'm not a musician, at least not much of one. Um, you know, I, there are people, you know, better suited to that. I am a writer, I guess, but at the same time, um, I don't know if I'm the best choice uh, as far as that's concerned. 
Um, okay, Darth Russ says, all I want from SLS is to not fail any missions and become a budget anchor under the banner of Fix SLS. 12 to 14 of them on novel exploration missions over 10 years, including the Outer Planet, something like that, as long as it gets us to what's next. I can make my peace with it. Very interesting. Very interesting. And yeah, and what's next is probably a Vulcan uh, heavy. Yep. Very, very possible. Um, three, and what a Vulcan heavy is, by the way, is three Vulcan centaurs lashed together, kind of like a Falcon heavy, except uh, a lot more power behind it. Um, brand new RS-25 is ordered. Yes, uh, that was indeed the case. All right, let's see. I'm going to try to catch up um, with more of what's going on. Uh, antimatter starship. Yes, uh, somebody made a, a comment um, as far as that's concerned. Okay, let's uh, let's keep this look at. I'm sorry, I'm just having a look at some of the chats that have gone. God, I'm sorry, guys. So many of these. Um, it's NASA's time as a craft development agency, basically over. Says Shane. Thank you for the five quid. Really do appreciate that. Yes, I think it is. Um, in terms of developing rockets and that sort of thing, I need think NASA needs to give that up. Um, they need to let the the private let private enterprise handle that. Um, that that needs to uh to move on to other topics um thank you so much uh mr darmo uh, boy super chats coming across thank you so much guys um neat stuff neat stuff uh new armstrong somebody just brought that one up uh once i see new glenn then i'll talk about new armstrong um you know, I mean, that as long as it's taken uh, Blue Origin to, to develop New Glenn, uh, New Armstrong, maybe 20 years from now, maybe, uh, I, you know, we'll see what happens with that. And, you know, if they make a sudden turnaround and start developing things faster, um, that would be uh, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing stuff. Um, uh, thank you for pointing that out. A, a point was made that it wouldn't be like Falcon Heavy, the, uh, the Vulcan Centaur Heavy. That is true. It, it's it's not necessarily a fair comparison a single core rather than using three yeah that's a good point um it's not exactly the same thing um gary thank you so much uh to the future desperate youtube blocked what rare week old uh, notifications slip through can't be said i need to check that uh to the future okay i need to see what's happening with to the future um i have no idea uh but I'd be, I, I'll, I'll check on them um, as soon as I possibly can. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. If anybody else knows what's going on with them, um, I'd really like to know. Okay, let's keep things going. Um, okay, I want to see SLS launch succeed, says Johnny Spacer, not for Boeing, but for all the talented people who have worked so long on this project. Yes, I've got, I got to meet some of those guys in Huntsville. I don't want to see their project go down the tubes. I, I really don't. I'd like to see some you know see it succeed at the same time i don't want to see it stay around forever i don't want to see it you know be sustained i would like to see starship replace it obviously is what i would like to see in terms of a you know a future thing um over 700 people watching thank you so much trying to get to 500 likes if we can um really do appreciate that and uh but yeah, um, be delighted if, if that's possible. Okay, if Musk can't land his starship, he could put his money into decreasing Earth's gravity to make it easier, says Ken. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for the five quid. Do appreciate that. Our gravity is extremely um, inconvenient. There's no question um, about that. To the future is still on my subscription list. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong. Okay, um, once again, I was, I was just scared there for, for a minute. Um, so once again, to repeat, you know, I'd, I'd like to, I do want to see SLS go to the moon and succeed you know, on the short term. Long term, I want to see it get replaced um, as soon as convenient um, because it is an outdated and wasteful concept. But at the same time, you know, I don't want to, I, I don't want Artemis to get held up. I want us to get to the moon. So it's, it's, it's a tough balancing act, I guess, is, is what I'm trying to say. Um, more articulate. Just, <laughs> um, what's smaller and less powerful than the new Shepard rocket, the new Bezos rocket? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Starliner Glitch. Um, okay, uh, what's going on? Yeah, it, it's, I'm, I'm, 
I don't know. I'm not sure, Timothy. It's it's all kind of funky as far as that's concerned. Um, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll we'll see what ends up happening. I'm trying to get to 500 likes if we can. We have over 700 people watching. I'd be delighted if you did smash that like. However, I'm just happy that you're watching. So thank you very much for that as well. Um, and so we... Uh, we have a little bit more time. I plan to spend, you know, another 10, 15 minutes at least um, discussing this topic. Um, so let's let's keep it going. Hey, everybody. Um, we have, and like I say, I'm sorry, there's a lot of people who have been, uh, who've been overlooked here. Uh, there's so many chats coming across. I really do appreciate all of the comments and all the questions, and I just can't keep up with all of them. I do have my moderators who occasionally um, bring up things that are asked repeatedly. Um, yeah, we might see SN15 launching really soon. I just noticed that come across. Um, if it does, then that's going to put me in a bind. I've got some doctor's appointments and things coming up this week, but at the same time, that is my intention is going to see SN15. Since SN11 sat on the pad for about three weeks, my suspicion is, is that SN15 will be there at least as long to do some testing um, before, you know, they send, before they light the candle, shall we say but you know we'll see but that's that's my intention obviously is getting back to boca and checking it out um biden at in terms of uh just to answer your question uh jane fonda um the biden has not said anything about 2024 no statement has been made whatsoever what i find to be encouraging is the fact that nasa's budget has gone up that Artemis's budget has gone up, that the intention of going to the moon is there, that we have both Republicans and Democrats pushing for returning to the moon, pushing for Artemis, and I think that the 2024 date is still realistic. I still think that that, that is something that, well, that folks would like to see. Uh, getting towards 500 likes. I hope so, guys. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, 750 people watching please subscribe as well okay why didn't they just upgrade the old saturn 5 with new avionics instead of spending billions on the sls good question good question uh steve um I, I don't have an easy answer for you on that one. Shuttle technology was around. Um, we had a lot of shuttle technology already, and we didn't have um, the old Saturn V stuff had been out of circulation for a very long time. So the assumption may have been that we just simply put more RS-25 engines and bigger solid rocket boosters onto this thing. In other words, not very big technological leaps, and then we we make a super space shuttle essentially without the space shuttle <laughs> in other words just a bigger capsule on top of it than the apollo um and that's how we get there um so we will see um but yeah um that would be my explanation however it hasn't worked it hasn't been an effective um solution simply because the uh simply because what should have been easy technology the solid rocket boosters using the same engines using the same kind of fuel everything else all of that should have been easy as hell and yet it hasn't been. It's taken forever to get this done. And that's one thing that has always gotten me angry since the very moment that I started this channel. SLS should be a walk in the park as far as rocket science is concerned compared to the stuff that SpaceX has been doing lately and other operations. It should be a walk in the park and it hasn't been. And that is really beyond frustrating. And I'm very happy that the that the green run finally went off as an unqualified success. About time. But nevertheless, um, hard to say. Uh, oh, thank you so much, Timothy, for, for putting that up there. Um, yeah, the, the F1 was quite an amazing engine. Although its thrust to weight ratio was not as good as some other engines out there, um, but it did produce a tremendous amount of thrust um, and may never be equaled as an engine again. The F1 was amazing. I have seen these things in person, obviously, and they are astonishing. Oh, um, somebody's, uh, a number of questions have been asked about uh, a certain personality on YouTube and um, it starts with a T or T and ends with a T. Um, all I can say is, is that uh, it's a cyber bully. 
Simple as that. Has a ton of subscribers, um, loves pushing people around, loves, you know, insulting people online uh, for no particular good reason. Um, and uh, that is very, very um, unpleasant. Um, that's the sort of behavior that we should see, you know, from people like Jake Paul, you know, you know, YouTube personalities like that, not people who are involved in, you know, serious topics on YouTube. You know, we shouldn't be seeing this kind Kind of behavior, um, you know, just slamming other channels like that, unless you have a damn good reason to do it. Um, and I'm not, and the reason I'm not bringing it up, and the reason I'm not put it naming it by name, is because I am not going to give that person any recognition in public, aside from just just expressing my opinions, and that's it. Okay, um, Raptors problematic at this time could be replaced by RS 25s if necessary, says Johnny. That's an interesting idea. Um, they're much bigger. That's one of the problems. The RS-25 is huge, um, absolutely huge. Um, so uh, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, hard to say as far as that's concerned. And then uh, Roger Freeman, that would probably be possible. Elon would not be happy about it. Yeah, the RS-25 is super expensive. Um, and yeah, somebody that just said, uh, I think it's a Vablo. Yeah, that's who I'm talking about. Um, and and that's all I'm going to say in, that's, in that regard. So and that's not what this this episode is about anyway. So getting back on to it, um, I'm still very interested in opinions on this budget. To me, it's exciting. Um, I was expecting a cut in NASA budgeting or putting, you know, Artemis off. You know, that's what I was thinking at initially. That's what seemed to be, you know, the 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 trend. But it's not happening. Instead, the emphasis on Artemis is still there. The money is still flowing and that makes that encourages me and it you know it to me it makes 2024 possible a lot of people are talking about 2028 oh it's still only going to happen in 2028 why why does it have to take until 2028? We just completed the green run. The SLS core is about to go out to Cape Canaveral. Why, why does it have to sit out there for all those years? I think it's going to launch either at the end of this year or the beginning of next. And Artemis 1 will orbit the moon and people are going to get excited. They are going to get excited about this. And the more the public gets excited about this topic, the more that people are going to push for Artemis 2, for Artemis 3. You know, that's I think that's what's going to be coming. It doesn't have to take eight years. And I think the budget that they have now is sufficient in order to, because so much of it is done. SLS is, is developed at this point. It's just a matter of building more of, this, of the things. So, you know, and, and they've got the budget to do it and also the budget to build more Orion capsules. So, you know, HLS is really the only missing piece and that's one of the least expensive parts of it. So I think 2024 is very doable, um, especially also since the first two uh, modules of the Lunar Gateway are being delivered by a Falcon Heavy in 2023. Why put those modules there if you're not going there by 2024? Um, so uh rp1 for the first stage hydrolocks in upper stages okay yeah that that's that's sorry um that's just a comment that uh timothy used um okay so and darth i won't read that if you if you don't want me to let's go back over to the comments here what do i think the chance that a moonship will be chosen to be um is lander uh, moonship um, if we're talking about if we're talking about um, the lunar starship, if that is the topic, and if it's something else, I apologize. Um, lunar starship will probably not be chosen as an HLS, in my opinion. I think it will be part of Artemis eventually. I think that NASA has recognized that, and I think that they will use it. I don't think they're going to use it as a lander. I think a smaller lander makes more sense. Okay, it is lunar starship. Um, yeah. 
That's what I think is going to end up happening. We'll see. It's only a couple of weeks now before that decision is made. I'm on pins and needles, let me tell you. What I would love to see is Lunar Starship plus Alpaca. Lunar Starship acting as a refueling depot in orbit around the moon, maybe in the same orbit as the uh, as the Lunar Gateway, and then Alpaca going up and down to the moon and refueling from the Lunar Starship. That's something that I would think would be a very interesting uh, way of doing things and what I would approve of. I don't think actually that that's what's going to happen, but we shall see. Okay, we've got about uh, six or seven more minutes, something along those lines. Um, so, you know, once again, I appreciate it. We've got to still have over 700 people tuning in. I'm still very interested in more uh, comments and opinions. Um, let's keep this going here. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I kind of was just made. Yeah, they'll probably choose at least as one of the two finalists um, as the one from the national ripoff team, as I could like to call them. Um, so we will see as far as that's concerned. Um but uh, hopefully Dynetics will be the other one, and then Dynetics will prove that their, that their system is the best. Um, we definitely don't need to, yeah, a bat poll on the national ripoff. Yeah, that's, and once again, they released some new information not that long ago about their lander, and I was expecting something, you know, a big improvement, some new sort of breakthrough as far as the lander was concerned. Instead, they showed an animation of an astronaut climbing down the ladder, but it only showed the very bottom three or four meters, actually no, the bottom couple meters of the ladder descent. If they had shown that entire descent that an astronaut is going to have to make in order to go all the way down or all the way up that ladder, it would be a huge, huge negative promo piece of promotion for that, uh, for that lander. And plus, if you have an injured astronaut astronaut on the surface of the moon, how the hell are you going to drag him up that ladder? How are you going to do it? I don't know. And if, if I don't understand it, and I haven't seen a whole lot of explanation for it, then what explanation do we have? Is there an explanation? And if I were NASA, I would hate, let's say something happens with Artemis, let's say something happens with an astronaut in the future, an astronaut gets injured and they can't get them back up into the capsule because of that ladder. How would I explain to the media why I made the decision to go with that design in the first place? I wouldn't want to be the one making that explanation, as opposed to the alpaca that is close to the ground and easy to get into. You got an injured buddy on the surface of the moon, so easy to get them back to safety. That's how it should be done. Yeah, a winch, that might be one possibility, but uh, yeah, look at all this complexity. Why do we need to have all this, this complexity when we can just build it close to the ground? So, I don't know. Um, okay, national team needs a zip line to get down from the ladder. <laughs> that might be a new sport on the moon. Um, national team zip lining. Uh, that could be our, our new sport for the future. Will the moon missions be bringing back any lunar regolith to test 3D printing here on Earth or simply do it on the moon? Brood in 62, I think it's going to be a combination of both. Um, it also depends on how much we have with the Axiom Space Station um, and the ISS. They might actually return some of those samples to the ISS or to a commercial space station to experiment with it rather than bringing it back to Earth. We'll see because manufacturing this stuff on the moon is going to be different in one-sixth gravity than it's going to be here in full gravity. It would be better to test it um, in a lunar environment or in microgravity where some of that stuff might get uh, manufactured as well. Um, the, uh, sports on the moon, <laughs> that would be an interesting, oh, looks like we got somebody, uh, getting going with a, getting going with a, uh, table saw. Mm. Uh, yes, we've got a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of work going on in my neighborhood. I hope it's not too, uh, distracting. Okay, um, we are getting close to wrapping up, but I'm still going to take a couple more questions. Good, I'm glad you can barely hear it. Um, so, uh, Alan Kemet, um, orange and purple hoodies. Uh, 
you know, I don't know. I'll add them. Um, if folks are interested in orange and purple as colors in my uh, merch, then absolutely. I will be more than happy to change uh, my my page to uh, to allow for that. Um, so we'll um, I'll definitely throw those on today. Um, so so keep that in mind. Of course, that's another way to support the channel, but it's all on the uh, in the description in different ways of taking care of it. The merch is on my channel. Um, all you have to do is go underneath any video and you will see a line of my merch. Um, it's, it's all there. You just click on it. It goes uh, straight to the uh, straight to the shop. Um, so I will make all of those changes and uh, and add orange and purple to uh, to my color scheme. If people are interested in that orange rocket or silver rocket, silver rocket, definitely silver rocket, orange rocket now to get us to the moon as soon as possible. Silver rocket for the future, for ex, um, for exploring the solar system. Um, can we get to 600 likes? We only need 28 more. Anybody want to click some more? Anyway, that's, that's up to you. But uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I really do um, appreciate it. Do I like the new lunar spacesuits? Somebody just brought that up. Um, no, I don't. I think we could come up with a more innovative way of handling spacesuits. And it's been talked about the reverse mechanical pressure suits, um, the bio suits. Um, thank you, Sovereign, by the way. Thank you for the super chat. The, and I did an episode about these reverse mechanical pressure bio suits. They're skin tight, and yet they can still survive, um, provide the necessary life support for astronauts on Mars and the moon and really we should put money into that. All this money going into new technology for NASA should be put into that suit because it's so much easier to move in. It's so much lighter. And also if it gets a rip in it, it's easy to repair. It can be done very quickly um, as opposed to the conventional space suit, which is a lot more dangerous. Um, and it takes a, a lot more effort in order to be able to do it. Um, so guys, we're up to 619 likes. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate it. I'm afraid I need to go, but I've got um, one more comment um, coming in. So, and once again, thank you everybody for tuning in, duct tape. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Really do appreciate it. We got Roger Freeman making one more. I'm going to give him the last uh, last comment uh, if he has one to make. So um, we'll see what what we have to, to say. And Bruden 62 are going to, that suit would make it easier to climb the big ladder. Ah, no, no. Okay, don't develop it. Don't develop it. <laughs> All right, guys, I really do appreciate everybody tuning in. I really do appreciate the fact that we were able to have a conversation about this without it devolving into crazy political mudslinging. I'm very happy about that. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for tuning in for the likes or for the incredible amount of support. So until this budget is put to work and actually delivers what it's supposed to do, which is returning the human race to the moon and this time to stay until all of that comes to pass. I urge all of you to stay angry about space. <laughs>